A bed bug heater requires a lot of power, and powering that heater can be a challenge. Every structure should have a safety feature called a circuit breaker panel. The circuit breakers make sure that we don't accidentally draw too much power from the same electrical wires. The electrical wiring is only rated for a certain amount of amperage to pass through it safely. If the circuit breaker didn't do its job, all of the wiring and devices could become damaged or cause a fire hazard. When the circuit breaker flips itself off automatically, you may not even know that the heater is underpowered until the next time you check on it. It's easy to switch the circuit breaker back on, but it will always flip off again if we don't discover the true cause. Let's begin by placing the heater where you need it, but don't plug it in just yet. Second, you need to find out where the different circuits are available near this area. To find out the amperage and location of the circuits in your home, you need to locate your circuit breaker panel. They are usually on the outside of the home or in the master bedroom or sometimes in the laundry room. When you find it, open the panel door and look at the breakers. You'll see a numeric value labeled on each of the circuit breaker switches and this is the amp value for that circuit. A well-labeled circuit breaker will also tell you where the circuits are located as well. The common 110 volt outlets are typically on either 15 or 20 amp circuits. Since we are operating the heater for a long time, we should not draw more than 80% of the amperage on the breaker's label, or it can still trip that circuit breaker. For example, the Elite 4 heater has 4 inlets and 12 amps each. 12 is 80% of 15, and it has even more clearance on a 20 amp circuit. You can find these specs on all our heaters on our website. Never plug the blue cords for the heater inlets into the fan's outlet, a power strip, or a poorly rated extension cord because the power draw is too much. To begin plugging in the cords, it is easier to plug the heater and the fan's black power cords in the room you're treating. I recommend you plug the blue extension cords in the other rooms. They will also have a better chance of being on separate circuits when they are spaced far apart from each other. This is because it's possible for two rooms to share the same circuit. It's also a good idea to unplug all the other electronics in the treatment room and power off the electronics in the other rooms where you plugged in the blue cords. If you have a 240 volt appliance in your home, then you can use the power distribution kit to make things a lot easier. This kit will have the necessary adapters to step the 240 volt power down to a usable 120 volts and gives you a total of four 15 amp dedicated circuits. That makes it easy to fully power an Elite 4, or power half of our other heaters. Once you're sure that you divided the power to different circuits and have everything plugged in securely, you're ready to power on your heat treatment. Check the heater after running it an hour, to make sure all the lights next to the inlets are still on and that the fans are still running. If a breaker trips and powers off the circuit, the light will go out for that inlet. This is probably because we accidentally plugged too many cords on the same circuit. If the circuit breaker keeps tripping, this is how you resolve that issue. Follow the cords of the unpowered inlets to the wall outlets they are plugged into. Unplug the cord and move it further away from the other circuits. In the case of two inlets losing power, plug one of the extension cords somewhere else, but the other plug can remain where it is. Go to the circuit breaker panel to see which breaker switched off. Switch that breaker back on and this should turn on the unpowered inlets. If there is still no power, check if the outlet itself has a reset button. Then press the button to restore its power. This is true with our distribution box and fan outlets as well. Thanks for watching this video. Check out our other videos for more instructions on heat treatment preparation or specific operation of your heater. As always, if you still have any questions, just give us a call. We're always here to help.